What's up guys, welcome back, and today I want to talk about a camera that I think is the best travel medium format camera and best daily carry medium format camera you can get your hands on. Something that a lot of people might not even know exists, and that is the illustrious Bronica RF645 Rangefinder. So guys, I've got a lot of good things to say about this camera uh, and a lot to cover, so let's try and make this one quick. So to give you guys as brief a history as I can and some reasons why you may not have ever heard about this camera, is this bad boy, uh, which you know produced under the Bronica name but actually produced by Tamron, came out in 2000 and production stopped in 2005. So the camera literally came out right on the cusp of the digital era as digital cameras were starting to become more popular and more professionals were making the switch. So unfortunately, during that time period, this camera went completely under the radar. Uh, not many people used it, only limited numbers were made, mostly, you know, only sold in the Japanese markets. But the camera even won a design award for, for its ergonomics and sleek styling. It was that highly regarded at the time. But like I said, the digital era just managed to overshadow this camera. I honestly think if this camera had come out in the mid 90s, around the same time that the Mamiya 7s were being made, it would have got a, you know, a lot more notoriety, a lot more people would have realized you know, how compact, efficient, and a joy to use this camera was. And we probably would have seen higher sales and a lot more you know, units being well, still able to be purchased today. So let's get the specs out of the way real quick. So the camera, like most medium format cameras, has a max shutter speed of 500th of a second. Uh, it is a rangefinder, this camera, so you're using rangefinder focusing, which I personally love and I know a lot of people do as well. You have multiple exposure, you have an ISO dial, uh, which does only go up to 1600, uh, but you know, if you do plan on shooting 3200 film, uh, it's no big deal to just set it to 1600 and then just, you know, minus uh, two stops of uh, exposure on the exposure compensation dial and that will essentially put your light meter at 3200. Now the light meter is located in the rangefinder window as you can see by this little LED there. Now the only problem with this is if you plan on using filters, you're actually going to have to put the filter over the viewfinder to get a correct, correct light reading so you know your exposure. Speaking of the light meter guys, it's center weighted and it is very, very accurate. I found the light meter on this is pretty much taking a spot reading directly off the rangefinder patch itself, which actually lets you pick out some really, really perfect exposures. And one cool feature of this camera is, unlike with a lot of your 6.7 cameras like the Pentax and the Mamiya, which actually require you to uh, turn a lever to close um, the shutter curtain, well, a film curtain, so you don't overexpose your film, changing lenses. This camera, when you unhook and take off the lens, it automatically draws the curtain up for you, so you never have to worry about exposing film when changing lenses. So before I start talking about all the good, I do want to list a couple of downsides about this, you know, about this camera. It is fantastic. Uh, nothing that I personally find as a negative, but I thought I'd let you guys know just in case uh, it could be a deal breaker for you. First and most notable guys is the camera is in the portrait orientation. So when you're you know, holding the camera normally and composing, much like the Fuji GA and GS cameras, it is in portrait orientation. And to shoot a horizontal, you do need to turn the camera on its side like that. But in saying that, the grip and the ergonomics of this camera, it is so comfortable and the grip and the thumb recess on the back is so comfortable and you know really great to hold that it really is no big deal and no stress of your hand just to turn that camera and take a shot like that. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but it might be for some people. One bad thing about this camera, guys, is that because obviously, you know, Bronica doesn't exist anymore, um, even though the camera was made by Tamron, I did send an email to Tamron because up until 2012, these could be repaired. I sent an email to Tamron Australia. I got a response after a couple of days. I asked them, hey guys, you know, do you still have parts? Are you still repairing the RF645? And unfortunately, the answer is no, guys. They said there's no more parts left and these cameras can no longer be repaired and serviced by Tamron, unfortunately. The next con I wanna talk about, guys, is I haven't actually had it happen to me, but I have heard rumors on the web about this. Um, 
and the film advance on this camera, it's nice, but it does feel quite flimsy. Now, I have heard about people who have actually broken the camera uh, or you know lost a roll of film because when they're advancing their film, uh, the, the little nut, that lug that sits in your 120 roll film uh, can come loose, it can pop out. I've heard of people actually, uh, you know, the whole f film advance lever has broken. Uh, I mean, I've only heard these stories. This is actually the second one of these cameras I've owned, and I've never had any issues with it. So I don't know if maybe I've just gotten lucky with the two, um, but it's something to be mindful of, and I do keep it in mind, and I definitely don't crank the film advance as hard as I can. You know, I am quite gentle with this camera. Not that I'm worried about it happening, just to, you know, not agitate it so that something might happen down the track. And one last thing people might not like, guys, is the fact that it is an electronic camera. It requires two CR2 batteries to power it. Without any batteries, you can't use the camera. Now, while that might be a con to some, if you actually look on the manual, off two fresh CR2 batteries, the manual, the Bronica manual says you can shoot 100 rolls of 120 film with two fresh batteries. Now, I never believe all that, but let's say if it's half that amount and it's 50 rolls, I probably wouldn't even, not even come close to shooting 50 rolls of 120 a year. Uh, you know, maybe 40, but you know, I can safely know that if I am going to go on a trip somewhere and I'm worried about it, if I put a fresh pair of batteries in here, I'm good for that whole month trip or you know, however long I'm away. So, again, I don't think it's a big issue. Uh, just remember, you know, fresh set of batteries, you're probably good for 50 rolls. Now, one other thing to talk about, guys, is the lenses. Now, one drawback to rangefinder lenses is they can't focus close, uh, especially with these. Unfortunately, the closest focus distance for any of the Bronica lenses is one meter. So you're not going to be getting super close. You're not going to be, you know, doing super close focus macro stuff with these cameras. Uh, but however, the lens that is the kit lens here, this main one, this is a 65 millimeter f4. Now, the widest aperture on any of the Bronica lenses are f4, uh, much like the Mamiya 7 cameras. I don't think it's a big deal. I've never heard anyone really complain about the Mamiya 7 cameras only having an F4 because the lenses are considered to be some of the sharpest in the world. Um, and let me tell you something, I would honestly 100% say that these lenses are on par with what I've seen come out of the Mamiya 7. These rangefinder lenses are so sharp you're going to cut yourself. And the way they render colors is just magnificent. The tones, the sharpness, the contrast. I absolutely love every image I get out of this camera, whether it be black and white or color. This lens, this 65 mm the only one I have and will own, uh, is amazing. The 65 mm equates to about a 40 mm in 35 mm terms. And for me, 40 mm is like my, my bread and butter cup of tea. I just, I love 35, I love 50, but that 40 mm bridges that gap, which is just that little, you know, little bit tighter than that 35, but it still lets me capture, you know, a good environment within whatever I'm trying to capture. I love this lens. But while we're talking about lenses, the other three lenses besides this one that were made, there's a 45 mil, a 100 mil, and a 135. Now, pretty much forget about that 135 mil lens. Uh, Bronica ended up reissuing the camera uh, with the new serial number starting with one. The original cameras had a serial number starting with zero, but they reissued it with a 100 millimeter lens because that 135 was almost impossible to focus. Uh, you still need an external viewfinder for the 100 mil or the 45 mil. You've only got frame lines set in the camera for the kit lens, so to speak, that you will more or less find this camera with the 65 mil. Uh, but if those other lenses are anything like the quality of this lens, you won't be disappointed with any lens that you get for this system. So for me guys, like I said, I think this is the perfect travel and daily carry medium format camera. Uh, they are pricey, you know, you're looking at somewhere between 1500 to 1800 Australian dollars uh, for one in pretty good condition. If you want a mint, you know, boxed uh, with all the bits and pieces, it's probably gonna run you close to the $2,000 mark. Still far cheaper than a Mamiya 7 if it's a range finder that you really want. Now, a lot of people are probably gonna comment, well, the Fuji GA and GS, uh, you know, folding and fixed lens cameras from the 80s, what about those? They're the same deal. You know, yes, 
they're a rangefinder, they're in portrait orientation, they are getting quite old, some of them don't have light meters. Uh, I know a lot of people have had problems with that folding model with the 75mm lens and the bellows in there. This camera is just all in all well, more well built and better functioning than those Fuji cameras. Yes, it's gonna run your high price tag, but as soon as you pick up the camera and actually start to use it, you are gonna see where that money went. It went to a much well built and better ergonomic camera. So to sum up quick guys, you know, why I think this camera is so great. I mean, me personally, it's a rangefinder. I love rangefinders. I just think that they, the way they operate, I'm, I'm in the zone. I feel like I can see everything. I can see things coming into the frame. All that stuff that people say about Leicas and why they're such great street cameras applies to this as well. It is so ergonomical that in the hand I can carry it around all day. I don't need a strap. I either hold it like that or grip it like that. It's just so ergonomic and easy to use that that's why you want to take it everywhere. And part of that is it's not heavy, guys. It's not, it's not a heavy camera. As far as medium format goes, it's quite light. But because of the form factor and it's so easy to carry around, coupled with the fact that it has an amazing set of lenses for it that are extremely sharp and take wonderful contrasty punchy images, there's not much you can ask for, you know? Yes, there's lots of 35mm cameras that you can find that are just as good in every aspect like that. But if you're a medium format fanatic like me, this camera just feels great and it makes sense and you want to take it around everywhere every day you want to shoot more frames with it being you know six four five you're going to get those 16 shots on a roll of 120 compared to 12 and 10 with six six and six seven uh, and then even less with six nine so you're getting those extra shots that you probably would take on a holiday trip or you would day-to-day -day photographing everything and it just makes sense to use that smaller format as far as medium formats concerned but i absolutely love using this camera guys everything about it speaks to me which is why this is the second one i've owned when i sold my first one couple weeks down the track I regretted it I wish I hadn't sold that first one luckily I picked up another one which is in just as good condition and it goes everywhere this is a this is a camera that along you know I might take my my Hasselblad or one of my other cameras everywhere but I always find myself reaching to grab this camera uh, it's great on a photo walk it's great on a holiday there is nothing wrong with this camera if I had to change a couple things to be perfectly honest the only things I would change would be an extra you know stop a shutter max shutter speed of a thousandth of a second would be great but otherwise I can get around it because you know the lens does stop down to f32 if it is too bright out there and the only other thing I might change to be perfectly honest uh, no nah. Can't think of anything else. That's about it, guys. So guys, enough chit chat, enough bore. You wanna see the images? Here they are now. Everything I've shot over the two Bronica cameras that I have owned, color black and white. Lots of images for you guys to peruse through. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next episode.